Thank you for uh, joining us today for this uh, webinar on Shopify and Big Commerce. Um, our, our goal today is to explain uh, explain these connectors and uh, demonstrate what's available from uh, um, from integrating Shopify and Big Commerce uh, uh, shopping cart systems with Acumatica. So, in terms of agenda, um, we we'll, we'll briefly go through. Uh, the about Kensium slide. I will not spend too much time on that. It would be uh, a very high-level overview, and uh, we'd like to spend a little bit of time on explaining hosted shopping carts, which is what uh, uh, a Shopify and Big Commerce are. Uh, and we'll, we'll briefly talk about you know the advantages and disadvantages of a hosted shopping cart and why it, how it differs from the preferred platform uh, that Acumatica has with Magento and so on. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about uh, the demographics in terms of uh, people that uh, that would use Shopify and Big Commerce, and then we'll cover what information is synced, um, and these as as because of the nature of uh, how Shopify and Big Commerce works, uh, the, the data that is synced is different than what you're used to with our other connectors uh, at a solution like Magento and so on, um, and then we'll do a quick demo of the solution as well. And in the demo itself, we will cover primarily Shopify today. Um, and uh, Big Commerce works exactly the same way. And if anyone anyone is interested in uh, looking at the Big Commerce interface specifically, please uh, uh, do reach out to us um, at the end of this uh, webinar, and we'll schedule uh, a separate session with you to walk you through that. Okay. Um, Kensium Solutions, we. Uh, um, as, as with every other uh, webinar uh, that we explain and we reiterate, we are uh, a partner. We are an ISV partner. We do not sell Acumatica, and our goal is to help uh, Acumatica resellers be successful in the market and, and, and provide solutions that allow you to um, work with your customers and um, be able to integrate with Acumatica and so on. Um, our services and under Acumatica division include uh, development services, uh, support services, integrations, and implementation support as well. Um, integrations is, is, is what uh, we are demonstrating today. Uh, so today's integration is about uh, Shopify and uh, uh, Big Commerce. Um, specifically talking about hosted shopping carts, I mean, there are a lot of hosted shopping carts available in the industry. Uh, Big Commerce and Shopify are, are two of the biggest ones. Volusion used to be a, a, a big one till around uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, then Big Commerce took over. And at this time, it seems like Shopify is the buzz uh, uh, in the industry when it comes to hosted shopping carts. Um, so these are true uh, hosted solutions, SaaS-style uh, shopping carts. Uh, they're subscription-based. Um, the customers that are running their e-commerce stores on these uh, platforms would typically be paying a monthly fee. Um, so you don't need to worry about separate hosting or anything else. Uh, you also do not need anything to be installed. Um, it would be as simple as going to a network solution or good area and trying to set up a, a new website. So you can quickly get a website with a default theme set up and launched. Uh, and you, you, you do have a lot of different templates that you can use to uh, pick up and set up your website, which gives you a flexible design. Um, it's very stable because, um, you know, this being a true SaaS model, obviously if, the, if there is a problem with the platform, every merchant that's on the platform will go down. Um, so they, they take a lot of care in terms of... Uh, Making sure that the platform is uh, is up and running and, and maintain that 99.9% .9 uptime guarantees and so on. Uh, some platforms are obviously better than the others because uh, platforms like Big Commerce are are literally running on on on, on think of it like a running on an Amazon uh, cloud server or something like that. Uh, Shopify has a slightly better platform. Um, they they have fast uh, plug and play capabilities. The idea is that you can you can go into their uh, uh, store uh, and purchase plugins and extensions and uh, add them to your website very quickly. Um, all the product information is stored on the platform, so it's not uh, migrating away from these platforms is a challenge at times. Uh, there are ways to there are solutions available and ways to do this. Uh, the biggest 
concern is that these are not very customizable because they're hosted shopping solutions. Uh, you, you are working within the framework of what the platform offers and you cannot really uh, make a lot of changes. I think some of the biggest uh, uh, concerns that you typically see from customers is that they want to be able to modify their checkout page because um, you know conversions and uh, sales actually are impacted by uh, a good or a bad checkout page. So modifying that is not easy you're, because you're, you're running the same framework that everybody else in the, uh, on the platform is running. Um, and they use proprietary scripting language. For example, Shopify uses a language called Liquid, which is proprietary. Um, so, we, so that's the other challenge where uh, even your integration capabilities are slightly limited because it's not a very widely used and very well-known uh, uh, scripting language. Uh, compared to the other um, open source solutions, the, the number of extensions are slightly limited. But overall, you know, this is this is a good platform. It is they do have a lot of merchants and uh, uh, people that are running um, uh, running on Shopify. So let's look at you know who who are the kinds of uh, customers that prefer a hosted shopping cart like a Shopify or Big Commerce. Uh, primarily, it's it's great for small businesses and entrepreneurs. So these are pure play websites. What what this means is that uh, these are typically businesses with a few uh, you know few hundred or a couple of thousand uh, uh, unique uh, SKUs. Uh, the simple SKU structure. You know, in one of our previous webinars, we talked about uh, uh, the comp the, the compound data types, including uh, uh, you know the, the the configurable items, the bundle items, and so on. Um, those are not very easy to implement with these solutions. They follow simple, simple structure like uh, a traditional stock item or a non-stock item, and so on. Uh, even the promotions are simple. I mean, uh, you don't have a lot of creativity and a lot of flexibility out of the box in terms of what kind of promotions you can offer to the customers. And typically, these these platforms are chosen by companies that are. Um, just starting on e-commerce and then they stay on it. Um, typical uh, pricing for Shopify ranges from $29 to $199 per month. Now that's obviously very cheap, you know, the basic plan is only $29. The catch there is that there is a per transaction fee. So every time somebody actually checks out uh, and purchases an item from, from, from a Shopify store, they're actually paying a, a percentage of the transaction fee to Shopify and you have to handle it through their gateway and so on. Uh, there is a advanced version of Shopify that's available uh, which basically starts at $2,000 per month um, where you're not paying a per transaction fee but then you're, you're paying other fees uh, around it. Uh, Big Commerce ha has very similar uh, model as well. It's $29 to $199 per month. Um, the, the, the concern is that where Shopify gives you the ability to pick and stay either on the basic or move up to the Shopify Plus. BigCommerce recently has made a change where it's not an option to stay on the lower plan. Uh, the moment you cross a million dollars in uh, online revenue, you're bumped up to the enterprise plan which starts at uh, $3,100 a month and so on. Um, by the way, if there are any questions, feel free to uh, type them into the in, into the webinar window, and we'll collect all of these questions and answer them at the end of the at the end of the session. Moving on, uh, when you when you're syncing Acumatica with e-commerce, um, you know the the the, the goal is to uh, sync your product data, maintaining Acumatica as your single source of truth. Uh, order information, which includes you know the payments, the discounts, the actual items that are ordered, uh, the shipping and order statuses and uh, taxes, and the customer data, obviously including their phone numbers, addresses, payment methods, and all that stuff. Uh, one of the key things here to note is that uh, uh, this solution was built as an Acumatica extension. Um, it is not something that is uh, um, th th that's built separately. Um, for example, if you've seen our Magento demonstration and so on, there is components that are sitting inside Magento. Um, in this particular case, you would not see that because uh, Shopify and WeCommerce being a hosted solution, there is 
there's not too many changes that you can make uh, to, to, to the platform. Uh, integration is typically done through web services and so on. So, um, so the idea is to basically build this as an Acumatica and pull and push the data, which is what you will see in the next uh, slide. Um, so the idea is that we use Acumatica as a single source of truth. Uh, since most of you are, 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 are experienced Acumatica users, uh, the way we built this is to is the same way Acumatica handles an import and an export scenario or the way um, you, you'll do that with uh, CSV, XML files or even uh, Salesforce connectors and so on. So we've created these import and export data providers. Um, so you, you'll, you'll see one on the screenshot on the right and we'll cover this in the demo as well that uh, you have the ability to create a, a Shopify provider or a big commerce provider and then you're choosing what kind of uh, entities you're syncing and you're trying to um, uh, set up between the two systems. And then once you select the orders, you can actually go in and define what fields are available on Acumat an Acumatica for an order, for a sales order, and what fields are available in Shopify or BigCommerce for it, and then you can map them. Um, so it uses Acumatica score functionality using the data providers and the setup and processing screens. So the actual sync happens from Acumatica, so you're pulling data from uh, the Shopify and BigCommerce systems, and you're pushing data into those systems. Right? So the import and export scenarios are handled through custom data providers, and because you can reuse the processing screen, you can set up your, uh, you know, your sync intervals and everything using Acumatica core functionality. Okay. And the the point that I have with regenerate uh, schema as needed is that every time you you let's say you want to create a new attribute or a new field on the website uh, for a customer or a product or something like that, you can do that on the Shopify or BigCommerce interface and then come back into Acumatica and click on the regenerate schema and, the, and, and it basically pulls in all the latest fields and so on. Okay. So with that, um, let me turn over the presentation to uh, Sharif. Sharif uh, heads our, uh, uh, he's, he's uh, the delivery head for our Acumatica division uh, and I'll request him to do the demonstration for uh, the Shopify connector today. Sharif. Thank you, Noel. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Well, so let's um, have a quick demonstration of uh, how this Shopify is built on Acumatica and uh, what exactly it will do and what the user has to do with it and uh, things like that. So basically, um, just to give a brief introduction of uh, what uh, you know, the data providers are. So, uh, of course, most of the uh, you know attendees here are uh, already. Acumatica experts and Acumatica users. So Acumatica provides um, various data provides, uh, providers such as your CSV data provider, Excel data provider, SQL data provider and all such kind of things, sort kind of things. So here we have built our own um, data provider which is a custom data provider. So that is for the Shopify uh, data provider. And um, when we are in the, on this screen, you can see that we have uh, uh, a new data provider being available on this screen. So this, the concept of this data provider is to ensure that, you know, we are processing these transactions naturally in Acumatica and we are not doing any external, uh, you know, plugins or external tools that runs through, you know, some other window schedulers and things like that or maybe um, outside of Acumatica or things like that. So this uses completely the natural data providers concept. So where we can you know, define what are the different uh, parameters that are required to connect to the data provider. In this case, for example, we have our own uh, uh, Shopify account being uh, available here. So we have this login password and the validation. key. And of course, we also have the schema. So this is where uh, we have, say for example, an order and then we have the necessary fields that are available on Shopify, so which can uh, once they fill the schema and once we save the you know uh, data provider, we can actually make use of these fields and map the uh, uh, import scenario or the export scenario, which is again natural in Acumatica. So, for example, let's look at the uh, products here. So, for example, we have these products, products title, body HTML. So, these all are the fields like tags and you know the uh, SKU, then price, 
these all are the values of the fields that are available um, on the Shopify uh, API which are being pulled by the, the connector and this data provider can be used for uh, actually building your import scenarios and export scenarios. So I'll um, quickly show you one import scenario which um, we have uh, created as a sample. So for example, we talked about products, so let's say products here. And you can see that how these fields are mapped and configured. So for example, the target object is a stock item because we'll be dealing with the stock item screen, which is actually the uh, product screen which will be created in Acumatica. And we have these keys and you know the inventory ID, the fields that are mapped here. So you can see that the target object and the field objects are actually the Acumatica objects which are naturally coming from your uh, Acumatica graphs. Okay. And the source field is the one which you can configure or select from the data of a provider configuration that we have just seen. So all the fields that are available for this uh, object which is for products, so all these are available here and you can map these with respect to which value should go where. So for example, for the stock item summary we gave the description and we said the body HTML value a field uh, from Shopify is the one that, is, that should be going into the you know, uh, item uh, summary description field. So this is how we can you know create an import scenario at the same time the export scenarios. So uh, just to reiterate import scenarios is actually when we want to transfer the data from uh, Shopify to Acumatica and the export scenario is something which you want to you know, export the data from Acumatica to Shopify. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the export scenario as well. Uh, we look at the products same. So here you can see that now it, this has become a source object because from from the source we are taking the values and you know sending it to a different field uh, on the on the API and we are you know actually. Uh, pushing the data to the API directly and you will be able to see the data once it is pushed on the you know, uh, Shopify uh, portal. Okay, So here this is the source object and here is the target object because we are sending the value from Acumatica to Shopify. So what I'll do is uh, I'll quickly um, go to my Shopify account and I'll create um, a customer and um, a product and I'll create an order and I'll show how the sync works and um, then we can also talk about the exports at the same time the auto automation steps and all. So I'm going to create a customer. So here is my customer. I have my customer ready here, so I'm just saving this. So this is my customer on um, Shopify, and I'm going to create a product. So I'm just creating a new product. Say. And um, this is the product type which actually defines the item class on the Acumatica site and I'm also giving some tags which are necessary for mapping the tax categories and all. I'm giving some price to this and I have my product ready. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, show you how this uh, the, the sync works. So before that I just want to switch back to uh, Acumatica as well to show how individually you can you know, uh, process your orders and uh, sorry uh, products and customers. So I'll be going to my import scenario and um, let me add a quick point. What I mean by individually importing products and customers is if you are having an order which is which is having some new products and the new customers that are created on Shopify and when you come back and do a import um, of an order, automatically it's going to create uh, the, the product that is not available on Acumatica and also the customer that is not available on Acumatica dynamically. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly do the 
prepared. So we can see our new customer that we have created. All right. So here is our new customer. But I'm not going to do the import now because I want to show this with along with an order because uh, with the order, you know, it will automatically create the customers and the products. So I'm going back and creating an order on Shopify. So I'll be using my keyboard, which I've just created. And I'll use my customer. customer that I have just created, okay, probably two quantity, and I uh, need to mark this, um, you know, order as paid on Shopify so that the order is, uh, gets into a complete state on Shopify so that that can be synced back. So I'm just using the cash and delivery, delivery method, but of course we have other payment methods which are supported by Shopify, okay. So now we have this order created, now what I'll do is I'll just go to my order sync and here I'm using this uh, import scenario of orders so I'll do the prepare so you will get um, the order that I have just created uh, in the list of uh, once it is prepared and I can import that order into Acumatica okay so this is the order ID that is created here and of course, um, as you are aware, we have manual numbering and auto, you know, auto numbering and all these numbering sequences in Acumatica for most of the transactions and uh, masters. So the same concept works here. So if you have any um, manual or manual uh, numbering is um, set up, so it is going to use the, you know, customer ID and the order IDs from shop. And if you have the auto numbering sequence enabled, of course, obviously it's going to use the numbering sequence that is set up on um, on Acumatica. Okay, so I'm going to import this um, order. Well, it has so many other fields and you know things which we we, we may not need, but I'm just um, showing all this uh, here. Now you can see that this is processed, and uh, of course our favorite green symbol, operation completed. And let's go to the sales order. So this is my customer and this is my order. So you can see that this customer is created over here. Okay. We have the customer address details and all that stuff available. Okay. And then I have my inventory item as well, which is created on the fly. It is pricing and all other information. Of course, we can we can even give the you know weight and other details and packaging information that is available on Shopify, which will automatically sync back here. Okay. So well, once the order is ready on the on the or Acumatica side, um, you will know it's ready for doing any other processing. So for example, you can also see um, two other two other fields here, like this the external reference number, which shows the Shopify order number. Of course, this is an order ID and this is order number. So we're just showing both, uh, just for you know, uh, for the sake of show, showing. But we can still we can still manage these with your import scenarios and turn off uh, any field if you don't need that, right? So this is order, and of course, the normal fulfillment process, everything goes as usual um, from Acumatica. Like, of course, I don't have the stock on hand, but this is a newly created product, anyways, right? So that is how uh, the import scenarios work. And um, for that, of course, we have import scenarios for orders, products, and customers. So these are the three basic entities right now that we are um, having um, you know, in support uh, with this connector from uh, Shopify to Acumatica and Acumatica to Shopify, this is, which is basically a bi-directional um, sync. Now let's go and talk about um, some of the export scenarios as well. So what I'll do is I'll just create one a customer, I'll call it as a demo customer. Uh, well, on the Acumatica, sorry, on the Shopify side, uh, 
email address is mandatory. Of course, we know that it is not mandatory on uh, Acumatica screen, but it is mandatory there. And having uh, the valid address is also mandatory because uh, Acumatica, uh, sorry, Shopify actually validates the address as well. So when you actually give the address, okay. So the rest of the items, customer class default, that's fine. So now we have this customer which is created on Acumatica and now we want to push this customer to Shopify, uh, you know, so that we can have the uh, orders being uh, maintained for this customer as well when they go and, uh, you know, uh, take, do the orders. So this export scenario for customers. Here we go, we have your uh, customer here. So what I'll do is I'll not sync everybody here. I'll just do a selection. And this customer will be available on uh, Shopify. So let's go to the customers. and see if you have a demo customer here. Okay, here we go. So this is how the data can be synced um, from Acumatica to Shopify, so which is basically import export, which means it is two-directional. And of course, we always have our import scenarios, so which we can, um, you know, actually schedule. I have one, uh, I think, let me, let me see that, yeah. So, yes, so I have this, you know, import scenario scheduled. So, just let me quickly open this. So, I said it is daily and it should be running every day at 11.55 a.m. or p.m., whatever that you want, you can set up. Right. So this is the standard um, Acumatica stuff, so which uh, we can actually, you know, uh, set up and uh, use as the automation uh, con jobs at the background. Okay. And the other one important uh, aspect also I would like to talk about here is um, the licensing part. So, uh, well, we, we see this um, KN provider, of course. So if the user wants to, say for example, Acumatica is installed and the license is applied for Acumatica, that's fine. And when they publish our customization, which is a, you know, a just simple plugin, but which does a lot of good things for us. So when I start using this plugin, the KN Shopify connector, which it shows here, it will start looking for its own licensing. Is, is the licensing registered for this uh, connector or the plugin or not? And if the license is not registered, it's going to, you know, really go back to uh, a setup screen saying that, you know, the license is not uh, registered and you have to register for using, um, you know, using this kind of thing. And once you, uh, you there will be different, uh, you know, um, well, of course, the license is already applied, so I can't really show them on the webinar right now here, but you'll have some links, uh, hyperlinks, which will uh, redirect them to, you know, the registration page within, again, within Acumatica itself, again, it's not an external page where you're actually navigating to some other third party website and trying to, you know, register the site, of course not. So it's going to be a page where, uh, you know, you'll have to request for the license and then you can, you can send the license request via email. Of course, that email will come to our licensing um, admin and they'll be sending you the licensing key, like license key, which you can apply and you, know, you can start using this. And of course, um, as usual, uh, with respect to the licensing, the expiry dates and you know, um, if it is not valid or things like that, all those kind of stuff are taken care of in built. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sharif. There are there were a few questions that came through as the demonstration was going on, so I wanted to make sure that I answer those. And of course, if you do have any other questions, feel free to email us uh, uh, at acumaticaquestions at com. And uh, as as always, we'll get back to you right away with those uh, responses. Uh, the first one is with respect to multiple sites. Uh, do we have customers with multiple sites uh, connected to the same company? Uh, the unlike unlike uh, you know what I believe this question was uh, uh, from someone that has seen the Magento connector and so on, which supports multiple sites. Uh, Shopify does not have that concept. Uh, each website is a, is a separate account. So technically, you can connect to multiple. Uh, Shopify sites using the connector and, uh, and 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 bring all those orders into a single company within uh, within Acumatica. So that is definitely uh, possible. Uh, the second question was, uh, uh, let's see, uh, how does this work with point of sale? 
Um, the, the, Shopify has its own point of sale system. So, so there are two ways to do this. One is obviously you can use, uh, uh, you know, the, the traditional Acumatica point of sale systems, which you're you're all uh, comfortable with, whether it's Fusion or Savant and so on. Um, or Shopify has its own point of sale solution that is uh, uh, very um, uh, user friendly, which runs on, a, on, a, on an iPad and so on. Um, so if you are using that, then Shopify will ensure that the data between the, the point of sale system that they have and uh, their website are in sync and are correct, will then pull the data no matter what and uh, what the origin is into Acumatica. Okay. Uh, the next question is, uh, um, is this ready for Acumatica 6? Um, yes, it is. Um, all we, since we've used most of the core functionality and so on, uh, we, we've done a quick uh, quick test, um, and, and within the next week we will be doing a a, a deeper dive into the overall uh, uh, testing and uh, certifying the solution for Acumatica Six. Yeah, uh, Rahul, I want to add a point here. Um, the demonstration that I have shown is on six point kilometer. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out, Sharif. Um, so yes, we are ready for six then. Um, is this extension available in the catalog? Yes, on the Acumatica website, you will see Shopify and Big Commerce connectors both listed. Um, and yes, you can go through the extension catalog and uh, uh, the contact information and everything is right there uh, to reach out to us if you have any questions or if you need the connector for your customer. Okay. Uh, that's all the questions that I have right now. Uh, again, if there are other questions, please feel free to email to us at acumaticaquestions at kensim.com and uh, hopefully this uh, presentation and the webinar has been useful um, in, in showcasing how, uh, how these connectors to the hosted shopping systems work and uh, uh, yes, and if you do need any references or if you want us to talk to your, any of your customers in terms of their specific requirements, do let us know. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you for your time.